in today's lab, we're going to be talking about configuring a um, Cisco router to be a DHCP server. And for this lab, we're going to use a 2811 router, okay? So let's just get these on the canvas right now so we could start showing you how this, this works. All right, so I have one 2800 on the canvas, and I'm just going to get two switches. I'll just use the 3560s. And just use generic workstation. Generic workstation. All right, I'll use another switch. If you notice down here, we select the switch. We go to 2960s. Let's put 12960 in. I'll go over to computers and I'll put a, a server in, which is okay. Now let's start connecting them. So to start doing that, I go to the connections, and notice every time I hover the mouse over the different connection, it gives me, um, it tells you what cable they, they are. So this would be a console table, this is a th straight through connection, this is a crossover, and so on and so forth, right? So we'll be using straight through cables, so I'm just going to connect them up. All right, so um, we have connected everything now, so it's now time to start configuring the um, configuring the router. All right, so to do this, let's get in the router. You know, I, I always like to label my interfaces, so let, let me do that. I um, This interface is actually fast, Ethernet, zero, one, and um, the other side, obviously, is fast, Ethernet. 0 slash 1. So pardon me. This is 0 slash 1. This is 0 slash 0. So let's get in and start configuring the router. To do that, we double click on the router. I like to do it from the command line interface. So now it's asking me if I basically want to take me through a dialog. So it's more like an auto config. My beliefs are really if it's auto, you ought to not do it. Right? So I like to do it manual. So I'll just say no get out of there and just hit enter all right so we go in enable mode to do that en then um, go in config mode config t and inside here I always like to change the um, the, the router name so I'll just do host name um, lab DHCP router 01 you can choose whatever name you want and I hit enter um, also, I'm going to configure the, um, the F01 side of the router. So to do that, I will go and I'll select the router and I'll go to interface, FA0 slash 0. I'll give it an IP address. We're going to use the 192.168 network. So I'll just put one IP address is 192.168.1.1. I'll use slash 24, which is 255, that 255, that 255, that 0, and I'll just say no shut. And once we do that, it comes online. If you notice, on the router itself, the line, um, the line indicator turned to green, and on the switch, you know, it's in the process of um, turning to green also, so it's, it's not all the way done. Um, we'll also go into interface FA0 slash 1. And from here, we'll configure an IP address. So again, we'll be using, I don't know, for this side, I'll use like 10, 10, 10, 1, 0. Yeah, no shot. Notice, if I want to save my config and I'm in um, config mode, I could just do do wr. Right? If you are not in config mode, you need to be able to do wr. Right? And our router is up and running. 
Again, I'll go back in config T, that's in config mode, and I'll do IP IP DHCP, and then you'll see the option, it kind of explains it to you, exclude. So the IP address is that you don't want to be assigned automatically, you can always exclude them. So again, the command is IP DHCP exclude, excluded addresses. And this time I have to start from 192.168.1.1 because we have to use that one so we cannot have it reassign an IP address of 1.1. And I'll just say I'm going to exclude the first 10 IP addresses. So again, that's 192.168.1.10. So the first machine that's, that gets an IP address will actually get it, get 192.168.1.11. And we'll see that. Now we need to con figure the pool name. So we're going to say IP um, DHCP pool. And you can just do the question mark. It's asking you for a name. Again, this is, we'll just call it lab, lab pool. We can call it whatever we want. Right? And you do enter. By the way, anywhere you see uh, CR, that really means that it's a valid command and you could actually use it. Um, we will want to look at the commands that are available to us. So we, um, we can configure a gateway, we can configure DNS servers, and we'll configure the, um, the network and the subnet mask. All right. So to do that, the default gateway that we want our machines to get, we're going to say we want them to get default, a default router which is synonymous with default gateway, and that is 192.168.1.1. By the way, your default router is nothing more than the IP address that's configured to the interface of the router, right? And the network, all right? So now the network is, you know, what network we want to assign IP addresses for, and that's, the network is 192.168.1.0, and it's slash 24, so it's 255. That two five five that zero. All right, we're not going to install um, configure any DNS server, so we'll just leave it at that. And I like to save my config. Okay, now we're pretty much done on this side. We could go to the other side of the network, and once we go to the other side of the network, we could start configuring the server IP address. The server IP address in this case, you go to desktop IP config. We're using the ten dot ten dot ten dot. 10 networks, so I'll just give the server dot 100. Again, I'll use the slash 24255.255.255.0. And the gateway is 10.10.10.1. Remember, the gateway is nothing more than the IP address that is configured on your router. Okay? Gateway address is nothing more than the IP address from that subnet that is configured on your router. So we did that, and we could go to the command prompt and we could test to make sure that we could ping the gateway. We could ping its own gateway, which is ping 10.10.10.1, and it's replying, just like we'd expect. So therefore, we know TCP IP is working fine. Let's try to see if we can ping the other side, right? The other side of the gateway. Let me show you. I think I should label these for you to see it. So 10.10.10.1 is the IP address that is connect, configured in fast ethernet one. And um, 192.168.1.1 is the IP address that is configured in fast Ethernet zero. All right, so you see I, I labeled the network. So this network over here is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is a slash 24 network, so every computer that's on this side will be a part of this network. Let me just put them a little bit closer, right? This server, we actually assign 10.10.10.100, I think, to it. And we could go in and verify. So again, let's get back on our server over here and let's verify that we could get the far, get to the far end of the router to do that. We do ping 192.168.1.1. And voila. There we go, we can get to the far end. We don't know what these computers are configured with yet because they're using DHCP. So to get DHCP to function, 
what we'll have to do is go on one of these workstations. So let's start with PC0. And if we go into PC0 and go to desktop, go to IP config, right now it's set for static and there's nothing in there. And if we set it for DHCP, what it will do is it will try to find a DHCP server. And that's the whole, um, that's what this, this lab is all about. We configured our router, which is router zero in this case, to be that DHCP server. So it should assign an IP address to, should assign an IP address to these machines. So let's, let's try it. We click DHCP and voila. It did, 192.168.1.11, just like we saw. Because remember, on the config that we, we actually placed in our router, what we did, we specified that we're excluding, we're excluding IP addresses starting from 192.168.1 to 192.168.10. And we also mentioned that the first computer that would have gotten an IP address from the router would have gotten that 11. And just like we assumed, that's the same thing that happened. The, the default gateway that we specified in this case, we used um, the command default router, and that's what was configured there, right? We did not configure any DNS settings, and no DNS settings was issued out to the workstation, right? We can always go to the, um, the enabled mode, and we could do show IP DHCP and if we do that, we could look at binding, right? And that will tell us that there's one IP address that was issued out by the DHCP server, and it was issued to a computer that has a MAC address of 0067018801. So that would be the MAC address of this computer here. All right, let's see what happens if we go into PC2. So if we went to PC2, or PC1, I should say, click and config and do DHCP, the same thing happened. Again, this time it got dot 12, right? We could go into our router again. And if we look at the bindings, that should change. 192.168.1.12 is issued to a machine that has 00E0.837D7468. And the same thing will happen if we went ahead and we looked at a machine the other machine, right? It, we just saw that it got 13, and we go back to our router, and if we look at the bindings again, it shows up there. Now, let's, for verification, let's see whether or not we could ping from PC0 over to server, server 0 that has 10, that 10, that 100. We'll just look at that. So to do that, let's go to the, um, the desktop, and we'll close this out. We go to the command prompt, and we do ping 10.10.10.100. And it is working just like we expected for it to work. And let's do the same thing, but this time let's go from the server up to one of the workstations. So we know that these workstations on the other side was configured with 192.168.1.11. We're able to ping it. We are getting the replies with no problems whatsoever. It was also configured with 12. We're getting that reply also. And it should be no problems at all to get that. Sometimes the first ping times out, and if we do 13, we should get a reply with no problems whatsoever. So as you see, just to wrap up, we were able to successfully deploy a network with three hosts, um, a 3560 switch, and we're using a 2800 router, and this router is not only functioning as a router, but it's also functioning as a DHCP server. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you will come back to see hope you will come back to see more of my videos. Thank you very much. See you next time.